Hi guys, how are you doing? Um, it's it's that time again. I thought this time I'd like to talk a little bit about George Silver, about the the man himself, the guy who who created the system that I study and teach. Uh, before I go into that though, um, I just wanted to say a quick word uh, to all of you who offered such supportive comments on my last video. Um, uh, regarding my son. Thank you very much. It really does make a difference. Um, it's not a good situation. Everything's going well. He's had his first chemo. He's had a couple of operations now. The odds are in his favour. Um, we're told there's a very, very good chance that he'll make a full recovery. So we're just keeping our fingers crossed and everything's going according to plan. However, anyway, that's not what this is about. This is about um, George himself. I don't really want to talk about the context, I don't really want to talk about the system, I want to talk a little bit about George the man. In one of the, the videos um, where I was discussing his system, I mentioned that he was a soldier, and somebody in the comments, sorry I've completely forgotten your name, I should have made a note of it, but um, I've got a memory like a sieve, um, asked very reasonably, how do we know he was a soldier? Well, the answer to that is because he says he is. So we don't know he's a soldier. Um, we assume he's a soldier based on what is said in his manuscript. What we actually know about him is very little indeed. What we know is that there, were, there was a book published in 1599 entitled Paradoxes of Defence. Actually it's got a hugely long title but we're not going to go too much into that because it's, it's all very dull. Um, it was published by somebody claiming to be called George Silver. They claimed to have a brother called Toby, and they claimed to have issued a challenge against uh, Saviolo, and Saviolo never, never answered that challenge. What we actually know, well, very little. We don't know for certain that the manuscripts were actually written by somebody called George Silver. We know that a second book was found, which was ostensibly um, a follow-on, uh, brief instructions to my paradoxes of defence. The two are written in a very similar style. Uh, brief instructions was never published, so we don't know if, if Silver considered it finished or not. Hard to say. There are schools of thought that uh, that um, that say yes, it was very very close to publication, and some schools of thought say no, it was this was just a rough draft. I tend to to favour the former. I think that that it's pretty much complete. It's laid out very well in a coherent manner. And it describes the system very well. So I think it was it was pretty much ready for publication. Why it wasn't published, we don't know. It could be that George died before he had a chance to publish it. It could be that Essex, who he dedicated the first book to, had fallen out of favour. And he was keeping a much lower profile. But anyway, George the Man. Um, he claims to have knowledge of all sorts of weapons. Um, the only real way you're going to get that is either by being a Master of Defence and training within the Guild structure and working your way up to Master, which George never claimed to be. He spoke about the Masters of Defence, but he spoke about them as a separate entity. He didn't consider himself to be connected with them, and that's basically because he was calling himself a gentleman. Um, and he got away with doing that, so clearly he was a gentleman. Um, and that gives him a very specific status in, in the social um, the social standing, if you like, um, which was significantly higher than that of the Master of Defence. They were, in effect, tradesmen, um, and he was significantly higher up the social ladder than they were. So, he was not connected to them, he'd learned his, his trade somewhere, and his manuscripts back up the fact that he knew what he was talking about. Do we know anything else about him from, from the manuscripts, from the books? Well, he mentions London, and he mentions Southampton a couple of times. And that gives us an area that we can look at for his residence. Now, thankfully, what we've got is um, a record created in 1575 by Clarence, Harold Her Arms. Um, and the re record is known as the Visitations. And effectively, what happened is the Herald at, Ar at Arms travelled around the country making a register of everybody who claimed to, ha to be able to, to have a coat of arms. And that record still exists today. 
I got hold of a copy of this on CD many, many years ago. It's all available online now. Um, what you're looking for is the Visitations of Hampshire. And if we look through that, we find that in Ropley, Hampshire, the Silver family. And we find that if we go down through from Barthol Sir Bartholomew Silver all the way down to, to the most recent generation, we find a list of, of children, the eldest of which was George. Um, that one of the brothers was Toby. There are, the family's quite large. So that makes us very suspicious that there's a, this, this connection exists. Um, it's in the right part of the country. George talks about Southampton and Hampshire. Within Hampshire we find a George Silver that has a brother, Toby, and the manuals, the books talk about George and his brother Toby. So we can fairly safely assume that this is our George. Um, what else we know for certain? Well, there's very little, if I'm being honest. Part of the problem is that Ropley was part of the land owned by the Bishop of Winchester, who was a hugely powerful man. Um, he owned huge swathes of land, and whole towns and villages. The city of Winchester was effectively his domain, and Ropley wasn't really a village with, it, with its own parish. It was effectively a way chapel that belonged to the, the Bishop of Winchester. Now later on it became a parish in its own right and the parish records were assembled after the fact. There are silvers listed as being baptised in that church round about the right time. But none of them are George. So that makes things a bit tricky. The, the manor of Ropley was never held by anyone with the name Silver. So that makes us a little bit suspicious as to, to where Clarenceau got his um, information from. But clearly it came from somewhere. Um, where? Don't know. We know that the George Silver that was found in Ropley married someone called Mary Hayden. We have a marriage record, or at least an issuing of a marriage licence for St Clement Ladane in London and we know that that Mary Hayden married again later on. So we've got a, 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 um, a point at which we know George was dead by. Other than that we don't know a great deal. There are a number of legal documents from that period in time that still exist. That name George Silver um, but whether that's our George or a different George, it's very difficult to say. Um, interestingly, George talks about young men at the Inns of Court in London as if he understands what it's like to be a young man at the Inn of Court in London, which suggests that he may have been in, in the profession of the law. And some of the records we have relate to legal challenges that somebody would either have to be of a very high standing or to have some knowledge of the law to be able to do. Um, one of them is prosecuting um, a, a sheriff's deputy for, for an assault um, upon him. And it's exactly the sort of thing you'd expect a belligerent, possibly elderly by that point, ex-soldier who had his, his business within the law to be doing. But it is, without doubt, guesswork. All we know is what he tells us in his books. And unlike the system that we can test and prove to be accurate and effective, we can't prove that any of his claims are actually right. So we assume that George is the George of Ropley, and we assume that that George was indeed de descended from Sir Bartholomew Silver and married Mary Hayden. What happened after George? Well, that's another story, and probably one for another video. Um, we've probably got more idea of what happened post-George than we have um, pre-George. We know that the family moved from, from Hertfordshire. Um, and we know that post George a number of, of people called Silver left from ports in Hampshire and went across to America. But um, I won't go into any detail. I, I, I spent a long time chatting to, to a lovely chap in the States by the name of Ron, Ron Silver, 
who was trying to trace his ancestors and I was trying to work forward from George and we met somewhere in the middle. Um, but as I said, that's probably one for another video. So I hope this has been of some interest to you. I think it's, it's absolutely fascinating stuff. What I'll do when I, I have the time is I'll, I'll get together the, the, the scans of the documents I have and I'll stick them up on, on, um, on a page, a web page, or maybe we'll make a video out of them. Um, we'll have a bit of a play and see how it goes. And, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there. Now hopefully the garage, which is just over there, um, will we'll be empty fairly soon. It's getting closer. I don't need the whole thing empty. I need it to be empty enough that I can, I can get a sheet up as a backdrop and I can start doing some of the more technical videos again. But in the meantime, um, I hope this has been enjoyable. Um, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Cheers guys.